presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to uh, Phil in Puerto Rico. Hey, Phil, what's going on? Hey, Tom, doing great. Um, just wanted to thank you guys and the whole crew. Best content on the internet. Really appreciate everything you guys are doing. We appreciate you growling and problem with us out here. Phil, how did you find us? I just typed in live trading in YouTube one morning. Cool. I was looking for any type of live trading room you guys came up in. The, awesome. I know the quality when I see it, or at least I like to think so, and uh, I mean, you guys are just a dream. I appreciate everything well, you guys do. Welcome to the Tiger family. We appreciate your growling and uh, growling us. Uh, my pleasure. Now, Tom O'Brien. <laughs> Welcome, folks. Tommy O'Brien filling in for my dad, Tom. He's out today, and we'll see where this market goes as we got a little bit of a rebound going on right now. S&P is still negative by five points, but we're about 27, almost 30 points off of the lows we made earlier this morning. Those lows, just when I was getting off the air, things were looking a little bit shaky in the markets as you were down near about 30 points. Right now, S&P is just down single digits. You're right basically where we opened on Sunday night. We have a rollover on the futures going on. So even though you see a spike from the Friday close, to the Sunday night futures open. That's a rollover, not indicative of the markets actually trading higher. So we're basically where we open, um, where we closed on Friday action. s and is off by five. NASDAQ 100, we're off by 64 points. That's about a third of a percent in the red. Dow in positive territory, up about 40 points, one tenth percent in the positive. Trading at 39,232 in the Russell, negative by 14 right now. And yeah, Bitcoin's having quite a day, quite a month, quite a year. Boy, you call it everything, man. We're within $120 of all-time highs you just made about three hours ago. 73375 You got to take a look at this thing on a daily. It is a rocket ship, man. From October at 26776 almost a triple bagger. We're up three times that price point, 73350 right now. And Bitcoin, excuse me, pretty remarkable acceleration. It is not stopping, man. And I mean, you back it up, not to digress too much on Bitcoin, but how about the run, man? In terms of futures getting approved, right? You get a pullback from 50,000 to 40,000, potentially a case of buy the rumor, sell the news in terms of those spot Bitcoin ETFs getting approved. No, that was the buy, 40,000 to 73,000. We'll see where it stops, but it's not stopping yet, man. Volatility, to say the least. You got Ethereum out there as well. Don't cover Ethereum, but how about, how about it? Look at the run this thing is having. Pretty close percentage-wise, you're up over 4,000 for the first time in Ethereum. Ah, no, you were up as high as 4,900 in Ethereum. Okay, interesting, you gotta back it up. Ethereum with a much higher high when Bitcoin was peaking out as well. Nonetheless, at about 4,100, pretty remarkable. All right, back to regular markets, we'll call them. Crude, jumping around as well, up above $78. Crude up 13 pennies at 78.14. Gold contract, up above $4 at 21.89. How about some of those gold equities rocking, man? People getting into that gold contract. If you haven't tried out my dad's gold report, folks, he's got a new issue out today. Uh, check it out at tfnn.com. We'll jump through some of those gold equities later in the hour. You jump over to the 10-year right now, a little bit of negative price action. The 10-year yield sitting just at about 4.1%, 4.1. We're negative by three ticks right now. Excuse me, 111.20. There's your action on the 10-year. We're bouncing a bit off of the lows we made. We jump over to the dollar index this afternoon. Dollar, just chopping around, 102.86. Let's check in on the yen. Got to keep our eye on the yen, man. Quite the acceleration from 150 and change down to 146.93. Chopping around where you were on Friday as well. Expectations that the um, Central Bank of Japan, Bank of Japan, they may be uh, cutting for the first, uh, excuse me, hiking, hiking, right? Got to recalibrate the brain as they go forward for the first time since 2007, I think. You look at this thing on a longer term basis, a nice triple top up there at about 150, quite a move last week. We'll see what this week has to do with the dollar yen action. And where do we jump to for there? Well, we jump back to yields and what do we have? We have the CPI in focus. Tomorrow morning, 8.30 a.m., CPI in focus, the numbers they're looking for there, okay? You're looking for 0.4% on the headline, 0.3% on the core, 
That's month over month. So 0.4 on a headline, 0.3 on the core. And then on the year, they're looking for 3.1% on the year and 37 on the core. So even if you go to core, right, let's just go to core for a second. Tomorrow, 830, core consumer price indexes come out for the month of February. The core, you take out food and energy. Now, crude has been chopping around a little bit higher. But nonetheless, you take out food and energy. The numbers they're looking for are core, again, 0.3% on the month. I got them right here on my phone. And 3.7% on the year. And the interesting part about that, right? Now, the Fed prefers the PCE, okay? But nonetheless, they get this number. That's the last economic number they're going to get. The biggest one ahead of the March 20th meeting. Now, we get PPI later. We get retail sales. We get consumer sentiment, okay? But CPI tomorrow morning is the biggest one for sure. And then we have a Fed meeting nine days from right now on March 20th. 0.3% on a monthly basis and 3.7% year over year, 0.3 times 12 is 3.6. So if you annualize the expected month over month number right now of 0.3%, you're pretty close to the year over year number on the core basis of 3.7. Crude is going to make things a little bit more complex on the headline. That's the reason why they take out crude and, um, crude and food because their impact on those items they have less of an impact with their rates in terms of what happens to the price of crude, what happens to the price of food. They can be more volatile because of other circumstances. But nonetheless, it's still a pretty lofty number when you think about it. The kicker, though, of course, is that the Fed right now is sitting at five and a quarter to 5.5 percent, which is a pretty lofty level. And at some point, they're probably going to make the case that, yes, they have room to go. Yes, they have work to be done, but that they don't have to be as high as they are right now to be as restrictive as they need to be. Yeah. Now, you know, you look at Chairman Powell. This one was out here yesterday from Bloomberg. They need just a bit more evidence was the quote out there. Uh, we're not far from it. That's pretty strong words from the chairman in terms of leading the market here. He knows what the market is pricing in. He knows the expectations, the probabilities. March is out the window. He knows that nobody expects them to begin cutting in March. But they do expect it in June, and they may even expect it in May. And so when he tells you we're not far off from it, he knows the market thinks it's coming from June. If the market, um, if the data continues to come in line, we'll see where we go. Now, you look at their policy rates, right? The one thing, you go back to the 80s, right? Look at these peaks. The peaks do not usually last that long. Now, they did last that long in 2008, okay? But they do not last that long, 2005, 2008, whatever the years are, right? They do not last that long, these peaks. Usually the Fed, especially when they go on a hiking cycle to this degree, right? At some point they start easing. It doesn't mean they drop off a cliff. I mean, you see, what, the late 80s, early 90s? What did it take? Five years they were on a cutting cycle there, five full years, but they started from almost 10, right? Nonetheless, we get a little bit more information on March 20th from the chairman. We get the CPI out, 8.30 a.m. tomorrow. And we'll see where we go from there, man. You jump over to NVIDIA. NVIDIA shares right now, 860. Take a look at the 515 minute. You're pushing the lows of the session right now and quite the drop off. I mean, 2.5 billion shares for NVIDIA, folks. You're talking about more than $250 billion in market cap loss just from where this thing was trading on Friday. Pretty remarkable. All right. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back. We'll be talking to our man Steve Rhodes. We'll talk a little bit of market action. We'll be back in three minutes. Don't go away. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Call, call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps down about 10 points right now. NASDAQ 100 off 84. The Dow barely in the positive. Let's jump over to our man, Steve Rhodes. Folks, every trading day, you can listen to Steve's outstanding program, The Trader's Edge, live 11 till noon. And you can check out his outstanding newsletter, Mastering Probability, right on the homepage of TFNN.com. Folks, you scroll down to under featured content, you'll see Mastering Probability by our man, Steve Rhodes. You can sign up, whether it's a month at 149, you can save 22% if you go to the six month at 695, you can save over 593 bucks or 33% on the year. I encourage you to check them out. They all come with a 30 day money back guarantee. And folks, as I was getting ready to talk to Steve right now, when you sign up, you have a plethora of these webinars that he's put together, okay? And I mean, I'm not sure, I think there's almost 10 in here, just going through the ultimate trading signals. These, this is the subscriber section, folks, that you can get in if you check it out. These are all available. The ultimate trading signals, Japanese candlesticks, the oscillator unchanged line, the ultimate reversal patterns, how to spot and avoid the next bear market, overcoming fear in trading and investing, mastering the TD setup nine count. Um, amazing. I could just keep going, but we're going to talk to our man, Steve. So check out Mastering Probability. How about those webinars, Steve, man? You got quite a selection there. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to you. Uh, yeah, there is a good selection there. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, to help people to like, like, well, look, we're all about education, right? educating everybody that's here and the cool thing about the den is you've got everybody contributing in there as well uh giving ideas and so forth so it's a great set of tools uh that i that that i've developed out there and and i'd love to uh, teach uh, teach teach someone uh how to be able to interpret the message of the markets which is what we're going to do uh today but before i get started out there i mean how about the grand prix of saint petersburg i tried ah, to right today I turned to TV yesterday, I had no idea. I'm watching the car race, and all, next thing I know, they say they're coming from St. Petersburg. I was looking for your dad's you know, name on the leaderboard. <laughs> you know, Steve, I'll get I'll get a picture up. So Friday, folks, my dad couldn't do the program, and shame on us, we were down watching the practice runs of the cool. Grand Prix with Tommy. So my dad, me, Tommy uh -huh. are down there. And um, what was cool was is that they do the practice, of course, on Friday, just like F1. They do qualifying on Saturday, right? And then they do the race on Sunday. And so they had the practice runs. It was just cool enough with Tommy especially down there because, boy, 
it was a madhouse on Friday, so I can only imagine what that place was like on Sunday when the big race was going on. But pretty amazing. Yeah, they bring that to St. Pete, right? Pretty. Yeah. It was awesome, Steve. You'll have oh, to come very, down and check cool. it out some. And it's very like cool. a block from our office. We parked at the office and walked down. How amazing. Oh, okay. That's very cool. cool. And, then, and then next thing you know, last night I turned on uh, the Golf Channel for some reason, and they're rebroadcasting the women's tournament from Clearwater. So you guys okay. had a busy weekend yes. on that side of the course. On that side We're of in the, a lucky uh, spot, I, for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. So, talk to me. How about this market, man? Well, last week, your dad and I talked about gold. So, I wanted to just simply first just give an update on that. And what nice. we had talked I was listening about, to that. I was listening to that interview. Go for it. Perfect. Perfect. So, we had talked about the possibility that gold made a major bottom. And so, I just simply wanted to update all of our tigers on the current awesome. patterns that are out there. And uh, so, if we take a look at during the last 10 months, and this is the daily time frame chart for gold, gold has generated nine TD9 count patterns out there. Now, you mentioned the uh, the, the different uh, videos that I've got, educational videos. One of them is about the TD9 count pattern. And this is something that's very easy to uh, to learn and to identify. And I really recommend that people understand this pattern. When we take a look at this chart, you'll really try to under, you'll really understand why. So during the last 10 months, we've had nine TD9 count patterns. Two have failed. Those are the ones, Tommy, that I have in red out here. Okay. And seven have worked. So we've got a 78% uh, ratio at this stage here and uh, of, of success. So uh, so we have another TD9 count top that's going to go ahead and complete today. So today's pattern is going to be uh, number 10 in the succession. And that's the upper right-hand green arrow that we've got out there. Okay. So uh, the question is, what would be success here? Success is when we get a top is price pulling back to test support. We take a look at this daily time frame chart, Tommy. The only level of support that I have right now would be at 2126. So 2126 becomes the area. And the reason I have to say area is because that number, that line is going to go up and down as price moves up and down. But people can use that right now as a potential price target on a pullback. And that would be a pretty decent move. It would be a 60 point move out there. Not unusual for something that gold could do. So just be aware that today is going to go ahead and complete a TD9 count top. Now, this set of charts shows gold's daily, weekly, and monthly horizontal trading ranges. So Bud Rolfs, as you know, he had developed the primary trading range boundary lines. Um, I went ahead and Tommy and I took his uh, uh, his tools and automated it. And uh, so all these things out here, what they're looking for, what these lines represent, folks, is they represent the largest number of co-located opens or closes. So it doesn't matter whether it's an open of a daily time frame or weekly or monthly or a close. What we're looking for is how many times does price close uh, at or near that level out there. And then once we have the distance of one of those where we get the largest congestion, we just simply add that same distance up top and down below. And they typically add as uh, key levels of support or resistance. So if we look at the monthly time frame chart, the left-hand panel chart, this shows that we're above a horizontal trading range. So on a pullback, old resistance should become new support. So on top of the 2163-ish, or I forget the, num the number that I, that I gave on the- on 2126, 2126 was that first, Perfect. yeah. Perfect, thank you. So we've got also 2108 to consider on a monthly basis, 2036 on a weekly basis, and then 2163 on the daily time frame. Folks, we're just taking a look at price pulling back to different support, potential different support levels out there. And that's really key. So if gold is going to top though, the question really is, what's the U.S. dollar index going to do? And the reason yeah. that we ask that question is because, Tommy, the bottom panel that I have down here, this takes a look at a three-day correlation. The top panel is gold, center panel is the dollar, and the bottom panel calculates whether there's a directional correlation on average over the last three trading sessions. Well, when the bars are below zero, it tells us we have an inverse uh, relationship. So what's the U.S. dollar doing? Well, the U.S. dollar index is formed in A to B equals CD to the downside. This, uh, by the way, Tommy, this snapshot was taken maybe about an hour or two ago. And so I don't okay. know where we're, where we're at right now with the U.S. dollar index. But if we were to generate... I think it's 102.85. Yeah, pretty close, right. Yeah. Okay. So if this were to generate a bullish reversal candle, we would have a Gartley buy pattern. And that would suggest that the dollar is going to rally. That would make sense with the uh, with gold giving us a TD9 count pattern and pulling back. So we don't have that, uh, that bullish reversal candle just yet. But if we take a look at what's really going on here... What I see, and it's very subtle, but we have a higher high and a higher low. So we could see, even if we don't get that bullish reversal candle, it wouldn't be unusual to see the U.S. dollar index to rally up towards the 103.22 level. So we want to keep an eye on that. And if I take a look at the intraday charts for the U.S. dollar index, several of these have roads mint indicator patterns. It's a very cool pattern. It's one of the uh, workshops that's included for subscribers out there. And that's what you anticipate when a daily time frame is going to form a bottom. You like to see intraday 
time periods uh, confirm that signal. Now, we haven't seen the U.S. dollar break out above any res key resistance levels out there, but at least it's given us that signal uh, that it is attempting to form that bottom pattern out there. Of course, we want to keep our eye on the underlying currency pairs uh, so that make up the U.S. dollar index, the euro, the yen, the pound, and the aluni, which, by the way, we're at new all-time highs today. If we take a look at how the GLD is traded in terms of British pounds, in terms of uh, euros, and in terms of Australian dollars out there. So the last thing that I'd share with you with regard to gold is just that, that we're at new all-time highs today in those currencies. And if this, and that would be the one key thing, Tommy, that could stop gold from pulling back. Because those folks are buyers. They're not sellers. Sure. And we're not that far away from the all-time highs in terms of yen uh, out there. And, and, and we made that new all-time high on Friday. We take a look at GLD. Pretty so cool, man. Thing. You know. I appreciate it. I was listening when you were on my dad last week, man. You know, my ear, the gold is on quite a run. And what was cool was you said 2126. I put the 382 up there, Steve, of just this run it's had since February 14th. Yes. About 2125 is the 382 pullback right there. I love it. And that wouldn't I love be crazy it. at all, right? So, yeah, who knows? Exactly. Steve, yeah. thanks so much, man. We look forward to the yeah, show Tommy. tomorrow. Folks, check it, folks, check it out. Uh, listen to it tomorrow. Steve, thanks so much. Have a great one, man. You, too. Take care. you might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Tom O'Brien Show is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC.
Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps right now. We're negative by 8. NASDAQ 100 negative by 80. We get the Dow positive, and we got a caller. We got Michael in Orlando. Michael, good afternoon. How you doing, Tommy? I'm doing well, man. How about yourself? Good, good. I can't complain. What I, what I want to uh, – I had your dad look at um, this uh, ticket symbol B as in boy, C as in Connie, H as in Harry, G as in George, the Bitcoin Cash from Grayscale. Perfect. I got it up here, yes. Yeah, he had he had said keep an eye on the six dollars and seventy cent, but it looked like it blew through it. Uh, it sure does. For a pullback, <laughs> I was wondering um, what, what's your opinion on like maybe what to look for on a pullback. Boy, so is this Michael? Do you know is this is this trade is this just a spot Bitcoin ETF essentially? Is that what this is? BCHG. I'm just not you know there you go. It's it's one of the the grayscale trusts. It okay. hasn't been converted yet, like like GBTC. It hasn't been converted yet. This is okay. this is just a trust of the Bitcoin Cash. So can I ask you why um, you're trading this one versus uh, one of the new spot ETFs that have the low fees that just came out? Are you were you already in this or or how did that go? Yeah, I, 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 I've been I got in this one when it was was like two bucks. Okay. And I get, I got it when it was like two bucks. And sure. I dollar cost average into uh, the Fidelity one. Okay. So is, is are you, I'm just curious, because I know this is a big component going on, especially with Grayscale, with people in there. Um, is this is this something where you got to worry, not worry, but are you getting like tax selling when you're closing this versus just uh, closing well, it out and going into one of the other spot BTFs? Is that one of the things that you're considering? Uh, no, I just wonder what okay. was the pullback on this one. Uh, well, I'm just because I asked uh, because some of them different had moved. Some of that's, that's really one of the reasons why I, I jumped in at around that price because uh, Bitcoin kind of took off on me, and and I said, oh, let me let me grab one of the lag. That was basically my reasoning behind buying that one. What I was just I was just trying to find the, even the fee schedules, and when it gets into a trust, things get a little bit more different. You know, you can get some weird things that happen sometimes. And you're right, it's Bitcoin Cash Trust. Um, but, but things get a little bit murky in some of those vehicles. And especially, you know, what happens is, and this is just a little big pitch, something to keep in mind, because we got a caller when I was doing my dad show a couple weeks ago, too. Um, and it was that there's a lot of the ETFs, there's some that go off the futures, right? Or there's some that actually physically hold the Bitcoin themselves. And when you trade the ones that are open to futures, you open yourself up to contango risk, which is, you know, you got to roll each month and that could actually deviate from the price if they're just like holding them themselves. Um, so I'm just going to take a look at Bitcoin. OK, and we'll take a look at it. And let me just jump over. I mean, is this something that you're you're actively trading it? So you're going to be getting out. You're going to be getting back in. Or, or are you trying to really look at like a longer term position where you're going to get out, get out for a while, or maybe get in, get in for a while. Which is this active, or is it kind of maybe you're going to hold it for a while and just hope in ten years or five years or two years, man, that it's at a bigger price point? Does good, just do pretty good. That's how I was looking at. I'm sorry. One more time. Just trade. It's kind of a long swing trade. A long swing trade. Wow, that's like the best of both worlds. You want, right? Um, I don't know, man. If it's a swing trade. We just traded from 27,000 up to 73. I mean, I'm always looking at Fibonacci numbers. So just okay. on this last run that we've had, I'll put it back on a daily, from 40,000 alone, and that's pretty, pretty conservative because that's just a quick run. I mean, you're looking at the 3A2 brings you back to 60,000. We know how this thing moves, though. We just hit 60,000 March 5th, six days ago, right, on that one red day that we've had since we were at 51. So maybe 60,000 is a price point that you could look for it. Um, but 52,000 is where it chopped around from February 15th to February 26th. And then 50,000 is the high you got when you had the futures get approved. You know, maybe 50,000 if I'm really looking for it. I'd probably be a lot more comfortable. It's it's a risky game, man. That's the only, you know it if you're looking at it. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to say get in at 50 because boy, this thing could be a 22 in a heartbeat. And it doesn't mean, I think in the longer term, the reason why I asked you, is because I think in the longer term, man, five years down the road, said 10 years, and that's a long. But, yeah, it's going to be at much higher prices. So you probably have the wind at your back. But, boy, we've seen how this thing can rip roar to negative and positive, and we just almost doubled in price. 
And what's remarkable, and I know you know all this, Michael, but just think about it, it's remarkable that we've almost doubled in price from January 23rd, okay? And that's after all those Bitcoin ETFs got approved. They, they got approved on January 11th. We were near 50,000. You actually traded to 40 on January 23rd. We're at 73. NVIDIA is one example of how the market can suck a lot out pretty quickly, right? And that's on an equity that is changing the world. Even, even NVIDIA can lose a quarter trillion dollars in market cap almost in two days right now. Um, and I think even bigger swings are possible when you're talking about Bitcoin. But, but longer term or even swing trading, I like the idea, man. I like the idea. So maybe, you know, depends on, depends on where you want to put your stops. If you're going to keep a tight stop, yeah, you can try and get in here. Maybe when it hits the lows of, of that one day that you pull back on March 5th, 60,000, but set it tight, man. Because if you go below 60, you're probably going to 50. And if you go below 50, oh, okay. you're probably going to 40. I don't know, you know? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, I appreciate it, Tommy. All right. Best of luck, Michael. Keep those stops in place, Thanks man. Only use money that you're willing to risk losing out there on Bitcoin. That's the one thing I can tell you, okay? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. This is, this is, this is a totally separate account. It's not a retirement. No, that's great. <laughs> it's great. Listen, there's nothing wrong. I have some. I have you know, tiny piece, tiny piece of Bitcoin. You know, but but and if it goes to zero, I'll be fine. And if it goes to a million bucks, hey, we'll see what happens. Who knows, right? Oh, okay. Uh, hey. I right, appreciate it, buddy. Thanks, Michael. Take care. All right. You know, a million sounds crazy, folks. But if you told somebody seventy-three thousand, uh, and not even that long ago, right? You told them seventy-three thousand in October. I mean, we were talking about how about. El Salvador, right? Is it El Salvador? The uh, Bitcoin center, right? Yeah. I mean, I mean, they should make that guy a uh, dictator for life. Um, <laughs> look at, so I pull up, I just Google El Salvador Bitcoin, okay? The first article that comes up, and listen, this is just nonsense, I'm sure, or to a degree. El Salvador may become one of the world's richest countries due to Bitcoin holdings. Well, we'll see, we'll see what happens, folks, okay? Um, but yeah, pretty remarkable the run up that we've had right now. And yeah, everyone's talking about Bitcoin having, and there is a very real deal about the future of that, the finite supply that exists. And yeah, but pay attention to what vehicle you're in. And in, in this break, I'm gonna pull up a couple because that was one thing that I looked at for a previous caller. And and you know, you wanna be careful because if I was doing it, I'd be in a spot Bitcoin ETF with very little fees. You can do that nowadays. Get away from the futures ones because there is such a vast demand right now that if you have to roll your entire ETF holdings month to month, you may face a problem on a month to month basis. Doesn't mean it's gonna weaken Bitcoin, but boy, you want some volatility as traders. Volatility is a trader's best friend, right? And that's why Bitcoin, man. Markets, S&P's negative by 12, folks. Stay tuned, we'll come back. We'll talk some other market action. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. 
having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien! Welcome back, folks. S&P's down single digits. We're down by six right now. Now, Michael got me going down the, uh, the Bitcoin rabbit hole during the break. And it is remarkable how many of these. So this is BC and with so BCHG is Bitcoin Cash too. Okay, and I know he mentioned that, but in in the in the conversation, I don't think I realized it, which is not even Bitcoin, I believe. So hopefully you know that, Michael, which I think he did. I think he was telling me that in the beginning. But then you go okay to, and I'm even pulling up. Let's see where are we at? Yeah, you know, I, I was trying to pull up some of this, and this is the Bitcoin Cash Trust Grayscale. Yeah, Grayscale Bitcoin Cash Trust versus Bitcoin, because Bitcoin Cash is different than Bitcoin, okay? But it shows here, and I don't even know if this is recent. Nothing's even showing up. It's got a 12-month yield, yield of zero, 132 million in assets, and expense, expense ratio of 2.5%. It only shows a net asset value of 375, but it's not printing the last price. All right, so be careful of this one, Michael, if you're still listening out there. If you want action, man, I would get out of that, and I would get into one of the top just new Bitcoin ETFs that are out there that are pretty affordable um, when you talk about fees, whatever it is. Um, what's the main one out there? Is it, is it ProShares right now? Bitto, right? The ProShares Bitcoin ETF strategy. Um, what do they have in funding? We'll pull it up. But this is one of them, like I mentioned. No, see, Bitco invests in Bitcoin futures and does not invest in Bitcoin there is no guarantee the fund will closely track book Bitcoin returns. This is what I'm talking about. All right. So buyer beware across the board. At the next break, I'll do it again. And you know what? Before my program tomorrow, not to tease it, but I'm going to go into this as well, man, because I got to get it in my own head doing all these programs as they all come out. So that's the ProShares.com website. It aims to produce returns that correspond to Bitcoin. Um, it's a strategy ETF, but they invest in futures. And that's a problem. And when you look at their holdings, and this is what I was talking about, okay, this is the one to avoid as well. What do you got? All you got is 50% in the March futures contract and 50% in the April futures contract. And you got to roll them all. And we know if you've been in the market long enough that that can pre present some problems, to put it lightly. So um, I'll even pull it up in the next one. But yes, you want. Yeah, we'll pull it up at the next one. All right, let's jump back to the market. Let's talk some Boeing, man. Don't buy Boeing, folks. That's that's a definitive, and I could be wrong, but I think there's a lot better risk reward plays in the market when you got a tail risk of a criminal investigation of planes that just have doors popping out and they got no documentation. I mentioned in my program this morning. So Boeing, jump over to the headline here. Boeing extends the 2024 drop past 25 percent on the U.S. investigation. This is a criminal investigation. They have a grand jury going on. Okay, they don't do that just because you innocently forgot to file some paperwork or you were just being um, lazy and not doing the best job that you could. Criminal means criminal. Okay. Yeah, and we'll go back to the Bitcoin. My um, has convened a grand jury. Okay, to hear evidence in the case now. 
this is from when they had the door pop out of the plane, okay? But federal prosecutors now have a grand jury going on the probe, and they have no documentation whatsoever in terms of what happened to that door. They're facing growing scrutiny. Um, and yeah, you're talking about subpoenas here. You're talking about interviews, right? You see what can happen as part of a criminal or, uh, organ, um, investigation. Excuse me. In the Alaska Air incident, four bolts that should have been prevented, the panel covering, were missing. And they have no records whatsoever. Well, on Bloomberg this morning, they were talking about it. And it was almost embarrassing, I think, for some of the reporters, which I love. And it wasn't Jonathan Farrow. Anyway, um, but how they, were, they had said that this was embarrassing for them, illustrating how poorly of a job they were doing when it came to safety. But that's not the story, okay? The story is it's a criminal investigation, and now the documents that the investigators have requested have gone missing, okay? View it from that angle as a traitor. That's how I would be viewing it. Um, yeah, because a criminal investigation, man, you know, it's at the point. You, you, I, if I was flying, especially with Tommy, I'd be checking what kind of plane I'm on. And that is remarkable that they have lost the ability when you think about how safe generally air travel is, that anyway, it speaks for itself. Uh, criminal investigation. And then you had another plane that just over the weekend had technical difficulties. The headlines were all over it today um, for 50 people injured. Yeah, and I'll have to find that one as well, as I don't think that one's in this one. No, it was. Yeah, here it is. On Monday, 10 passengers, Latam Air hospitalized after a plane encountered unexpected turbulence, but it said it had to do with a technical event during the flight, which caused a strong movement. Most times this stuff probably wouldn't catch the headlines that it catches, right? You got a technical difficulty, nobody's dead, 10 people are injured, you might catch a headline, nobody probably would even know what kind of plane it was on, it would just be a tantalizing headline, but that's not the case anymore. And the fact that it's criminal, there's gonna be more information coming out, subpoenas, right? Interviews, all of that stuff coming down the line for Boeing shares. I was talking about it this morning. I was surprised at where it was where it was when they opened. You trade it down, you trade it back. Nonetheless, uh, they got some woes, to put it lightly, for Boeing shares. Yeah, and let's see what, it is Blackstone. What is that one? IBIT, that's the one, I-B-I-T. All right, you wanna play some Bitcoin action? Go play this one, folks, okay? Do they have even the definition yet? It's gonna be the iShares one. And that's why Blackstone's eating up all the Bitcoin because it's decentralized. So so, so BlackRock's gonna control it all. Um, yeah, we'll pull up that fact sheet as well. Let's see what they sell us. Is it right here? Yeah, good old Blackstone, right? We'll pull up that one as well. Uh, Ethereum's another one. I wouldn't be doing Bitcoin Cash, and I wouldn't be touching any of the other altcoins. We'll call them altcoins. We'll keep it PG rated instead of the other term. Um, you know, there's there's real technology. There's going to be some other breakouts as well. Don't get into the NFT game. You want some action? Bitcoin, Ethereum, they're the action. Uh, why do you need more action than that, right? That's that's what. Why do you need more action than what's going on in Bitcoin? That's one thing you could ask yourself on that. We jump over to Coinbase at the end of that conversation. A little bit of a rollover, man. Check that out from 275 to 255. For Coinbase, back to where we were on Friday, but that's quite a little bit of a rollover, even when you got Bitcoin slamming highs right now at 73,000. Coinbase gives it up a bit. All right, we talked about gold. I mentioned the gold report today out my dad's newsletter. If you want to check that out, check it out at tfnn.com. And we got to jump through some of these equities, man, because it is remarkable. Our man, Steve Rhodes, giving us a great update on his take on gold. All right. And it's pretty interesting, right? He put out that first number. And that's why I remembered it for sure, because he said 20, 2126. I said, you know what? That'd be super reasonable pullback, 2126. I bet that's pretty close to a 382. You pull it up on the chart from the low we had, February 14th, less than a month later, you're at 2200. The 382 brings you to 2125. Pretty remarkable right now for gold, up $2 in the session. But what I think is indicative of the strength in this market is not even the gold contract. It's how buyers are getting ahead of the gold contract in equities like Harmony. <sighs> Gold's like almost flat. Gold's up $2 today. Harmony is up 11%. Hecla, up 7% right now. You can jump around, man. There's many of them. What are, I'm just I'm just cherry picking. Now, Mux is flat. 
Uh, El Dorado up a percent. IEG up two percent. Um, Harmony, Hecla, some other ones. Stay tuned, folks. One more segment. S and P's down by ten. We'll come back. We'll take a look at those CPI numbers one more time. Ahead of the numbers at eight thirty tomorrow. Stay tuned. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. So you, if you do want to get a Bitcoin ETF, okay? Jeez, I'm jumping all around, man. That's Black Rock. Is that the one? I'm all around. Blackstone. Which one is that? Yeah, I think it's IBIT that we're talking about, which is Black Rock. Okay, and they have $10 billion of funds, and you're talking about an expense ratio of 0.12%, and you're talking about physical Bitcoin in terms of what they have going on. Yeah, that's the one. IBIT, $9.4 billion. Okay, you have a marginal fee expense of 0.12%. You got $10 billion. You got BlackRock holding your physical Bitcoin. Okay, and when you talk about the holdings, there's no futures in there. Okay. They're just holding Bitcoin. Where does it show up? Does it show up in their holdings? Not available. That's because they don't have anything on this list. Look at this. They don't have stocks. They don't have bonds. They don't have anything. Yahoo needs to reset their calibration here because all they have is Bitcoin. 
and you're going to have competition in here, okay? But make sure you find a fund that is reliable, that's holding physical Bitcoin, and find one with a very low fee structure. Because what's going to happen is this fee, okay, is actually going to go up to 0.25%, I think, for IBIT. They put it down to 0.12%, and I was trying to find the exacts over the break, but it said something like, yeah, physical Bitcoin. That's right, Jimmy. Um, hey, it's you got you got Bitcoin and you got futures, though. And a lot of people don't understand it. I get the point in terms of what actually is it, but there is a degree. You can hold those Bitcoin yourself if you want to, man. Put them on a hard drive, right? Um, because I feel like some of those futures might be in trouble. It's a risk that you don't need to take. Let's put it that way. Folks, thanks so much for tuning in. Remember, we got CPI tomorrow at 830. I'll be back on the air right at 9 o'clock. Have a great night. Have a safe night, folks. I'm coming back for the 4 o'clock update. We'll be right back.